Raiden. Everybody, it's Cyborg, and thank you all for tuning into another episode of Random Select. This time we are covering Raiden in Mortal Kombat 11, and I am joined, as always, by Down for Audi, and we have a special guest, Cy. We record these episodes live on our Discord every few days or so, and if you want to join our Discord, it's in our description below. It's completely free, so come check it out. We have over 400 members, and there is conversation going on for Mortal Kombat 11, among other things. 24 7. Now, before we get to Raiden, I would like to ask Sai a couple questions just to get to know a little bit more about him and to give our viewers and listeners a chance to learn a little bit more as well. So, the first question would be How did you first get into Mortal Kombat? Uh, well, f I first started with the Mortal Kombat trilogy for the Nintendo 64, and I was about like four years old at the time. Uh, my cousins, you know, called me in, like, they were like, hey, check out this game we're playing. And I'm like, okay, sure. And then, like, I uh, walked in and into the, into the room, and I was watching them play with the Nintendo 64 controllers, and I was like, wow. And the first thing that immediately caught my eye about the game was how, like, just visually appealing it looked. Like, the characters looked colorful. I really liked the, like, the ninja palette swaps. Like, um, there was just something really cool and, like, magical about it to me. And, you sure. know, the sounds, yeah, yeah. the characters. And um, I know, like, a lot of people, if you ask them, like, what got you into, the, into Mortal Kombat, you always hear that same answer, like, oh, it's, it looked so bloody and, you know, so, like, it, like, it, it was kind of like Street Fighter, but, like, darker and stuff. I'm like, I, the gore never really was that, like, it was an appeal, appealing factor to me, but it what, never was the appealing factor. Like, to me, the visuals was always, like, the most intriguing thing about me and, uh, like, the art style and then... And the story was always, like, I think a secondary factor that came uh, to that, too. I was always interested in, like, okay, well, why does this character hate that guy? Like, why is why are they fighting? So Right. Yeah, and this was around the time I was, like, like, I had the freedom to, like, search up this, uh, the story around the internet and, like, reading the bios on the, on the game screen. So what you're saying is you had a lust for blood that couldn't be quenched. <laughs> 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 you could say that <laughs> yeah it was all about the blood for you you're a big gore fan just a gore hound this guy over yeah. here and he just couldn't get enough of it and that's why he was drawn to mortal Kombat. not the characters or the story or any interactions it's all about the gore with this guy mm -hmm. uh thirsty for it yes yeah, thirsty for it well that's good to know that uh that wasn't the huge factor for you that you're more into the story as you were mentioning kind of the different things about the characters and how they interact i, I do like that um about the franchise myself so talking about Raiden because you have made it clear that Raiden is a favorite of yours over the years mm -hmm. and definitely yes so what is your favorite thing about Raiden as a character um well for one I really love mentor archetypes it's one of the reasons why I really like Obi-Wan from the Star Wars series from the franchise and um I don't know, there's just something really cool about mentor archetypes to me that I really enjoy. And Raiden, especially to me, I think really plays a part into that. Especially uh, Christopher Lambert's portrayal of the character is probably my favorite mentor like character like in all of fiction. Like I just love how despite the fact that he's a god or like millions of years old who like knows more than everything, he still sort of presents himself, you know, in a humble manner and speaks to the mortals in a way like they would. Like, he makes fun of them, he cracks jokes, but he knows when to be serious and, you know, talk like a teacher. 
So I really like that sort of aspect to him. And it's kind of a shame to me that's not really the Raiden we see in the games. Like, yeah. it's more like a boring, monotone, like, narrator kind of guy. Yeah. And I think that's that's a factor that really pushed him back and, you know, and back on my list of favorite characters recently in these uh, in these uh, in these months. Sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, Raiden used to be really far into my top five, at least now I think he's number eight on my list. Interesting, yeah. I mean, that makes yeah. sense, but yeah. I still, I mean, I mean, I still love the character, though. I really, like, love his play style. I really love his, you know... Um, his like the whole mentor archetype and you know his designs over the years have always like been interesting and I, it was really cool seeing you know his uh, evolution throughout the series cool so, yeah i still love him he's pretty cool yeah yeah i mean visually he is awesome so I, I agree with you there and yeah unfortunately the characterization of him in the games doesn't quite live up to that first mortal Kombat movie with lambert so i i could see that i could see why he's kind of drop down for you just a tad bit but still holds a a place there in your top 10 well last question i have here for you before we get to raid in mortal kombat 11 is what is the one thing you are looking forward to in mortal kombat 11 the most um like in terms of raiden like or no just in general the game like oh. what oh, what oh. about the game are you looking forward to most well for one I am really, really, really happy they went back to the more colorful fantasy art style of this game. Amen. Uh, this franchise. Yes. Uh, I was... I, MKX, to me, was, like, the complete opposite of what I wanted. It, like, so many random leather belts all over the place, and especially in parts of the costume where they don't make sense, like, washed-out colors, like, just little contrast. But I think MK11 really is, like fixing all of that and like my god i just love some of the costumes in this game and i think that like giving me an option to like sort of customize the characters with the gear pieces i think it's like a dream come true for me i'm really happy with what i've been seeing with the gear and just so i think my favorite like my most you know anticipated like thing about the game like like what i'm really excited for are the definitely the gear pieces and the customization sure sure yeah i mean i'm with you there on the colors obviously that's kind of you and i have been talking about that for a long time now, just wanting more colors, more vibrancy, saturation, contrast, yeah. everything popping like it used to, whereas Mortal Kombat X was more kind of drab and dreary, washed out. So yeah, I mean, I think in terms of a visual and presentation standpoint, this game had exactly what we were asking for. It just looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm with Ishii, you there in that regard. Uh, Ishii, what game do you think you would compare... MK11's art style uh, the most to uh, in the Mortal Kombat games? Like, what game do you think this is closest to? It's hard to say because, like, it is a fantasy art style, but it's a different kind. Like, it's not, like... It's a different kind... It's a it's unique on its own to me, I think, actually. Like, the mm-hmm. way the armor looks, like, it's more flashier, more, like... The only thing I actually would compare this to is Deadly Alliance, just because of, like, the strong presence of gold. On the okay. character costumes, hmm. yeah. Yeah, I could see But that. other than that, yeah, like, other than that, like, the pieces, they seem like, I wouldn't say sci-fi, but it's just the way they're sort of shaped. It's kind of like, uh, I, I, I don't want to say MCU, like, but it's kind of similar to that. Especially with, like, like, Kronika and, like, Garrus. Like, just their costume designs. It's, like, new to the... It's, like, a new style in the series, but it still holds its own. I think it still kind of looks MK-ish. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I mean, speaking of designs and the visuals of the game, let's roll into Raiden's design. I'll take you through the design section here, along with Down for Audi. Then Down for Audi is going to kind of take the reins when we get into gameplay um, as we go along here. So, as we start off with design, you had mentioned gear pieces for Raiden. So... From my understanding, his three gear pieces in the game are his hat, his staff, and his medallion. So, Ishii, what are your thoughts on these three pieces? Are are these the ones that you would choose for Raiden? Like, do you think those are good choices? What are your thoughts on the, the options that you saw out there? I mean, to me, like, if you asked me what three gear pieces would be important, um, it's kind of hard to say, like... For, for at least for a third piece because like i think so far they've been what they've chosen seems to be like it makes sense like the hat is definitely an important accessory to the character the staff definitely is a third one 
I guess for the purposes of the narrative they're going for, I think the amulet is a, like being that that being a customizable piece makes sense. Right. Yeah, it's just. Um, I thought that was an odd choice. Um, I mean, like yeah, an interesting same. choice. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like we're all in the same boat of. I mean, I did not expect yeah. that. Like, I, I didn't look into his gear when I was at the event. So when I watched the ketchup and mustard video, which they're the ones that obviously help with a ton of this information for all of us to do these breakdowns. When I saw that the amulet was his third option there to change, I was that was surprising to me because I don't know. I what's the lore behind these other options? What I mean, are they just for fun? Are they just you know cool design pieces? I thought that was really really interesting. Yeah, it's like outside of the amulet and the medallion. It's like what else will there be? Is it yeah. just gonna be like random? Like medallions or what? I mean, yeah. I would have, I would have personally like had a cape option, but I think that. Oh, might that would have like, been sick. Yeah, that would have been good. And that might I mean, be can... like his skins. Yeah, I could see that. That's true. Tied yeah. to his skins, but yeah, I, that that would have made sense too. Because yeah, other than his hat and his staff, which are the two obvious ones, it's kind of hard to determine what do you include in every skin he has. And I guess having the amulet there in some capacity makes sense, but swapping it out for different cool logos and symbols maybe you have all the kamadogu for some reason i don't, I don't know I, I, it's just weird it's just an odd interesting choice i don't like dislike it i don't know if i like it it's just there i, I gotta see the other options but it's neat it's a definitely yeah. a left field pick that i wouldn't have expected as far Dude, as like what he actually gone. has oh, i'm sorry um Oh, okay. Uh, so as it's far okay. as like what he actually has in terms of like the gear pieces, I really like some of the designs on the staff. Especially like I love how one of them is like his classic um, wooden staff, just right. a plain one. Yeah. And uh, his hat pieces seem to be um, decent. I'm not really too sure about the one with the weird little forks hanging on the top. Yeah, I don't like that <laughs> yeah. one either. Yeah, the oh, light. Yeah. Is just, yeah, that is a interesting one. Yeah, I I just want classic hat, Raiden. I, I still I, just want just the base bare bones classic, you know, rice hat or whatever you call those. Yeah. Like yeah. that's still my favorite hat to give Raiden. I think it got a little over designed for my taste over the years with like the opening, the gaps and all the crazy things that are attached to it on the ends of it along the edge. Yeah, but you don't necessarily need those giant vents unless the hat is like oversized to the point where you can't really see through it. So you need right. the vents to like yeah. And I mean, I think definitely we might we we're definitely probably getting the um the classic hat at least as an unlockable. Yeah, I would, they I would assume they would have. So. Yeah, they mentioned they would have a lot of unlockable gear pieces, so that'd be exciting. Uh, before we move on, down four, did you have something that you were gonna say there? Oh, I was just gonna mention. Um, I do like that he has the base wooden staff, but I wish it sounded like wood and not just like it still has the clanky noises yeah. as the metallic staff and uh yeah the staffs look good though there's like one with like a dragon on the end of it or something that looks sick to me uh but none stands out to me on the hats that looks like super bad they're just kind of random hats i don't know yeah i saw his mkx hat i guess that's in but other than that nothing interesting um, yeah do you here's it's a question bad. what'd you say sorry going I was going to say the hats aren't bad or the staffs aren't bad. You know, yeah, no, I mean, good. they're all, yeah, they're all pretty decent. I agree with you. Um, What I was going to ask is, do you think that Raiden using the staff so pri like so prominently in his gameplay and as one of his gear pieces, what, how do you think they would like bring in Fujin? Because you would assume Fujin, based on his MKX appearance where he's using the staff quite a lot in his combat, I guess, in the cinematics, do you do you think Fujin would get the staff as well? Do you think he's getting the crossbow? <laughs> like, what do you what do you think for Fujin? Do you think that lessens his chances, or do you think it's just not a factor? Were you asking uh, me or Ishii? Yeah, uh, let's start with you. Or, uh, well, I I would say he should get the crossbow at this point because if you're gonna use a weapon, I don't think the staff was ever really Fujin's thing. It was always Raiden's thing. He should have had it by this point anyway. Um. He really only used it in Delhi Lions, like as a weapon and stuff outside of Fatality. So, right. I'm glad he has it in this game. But Fujin, like, you could do so much with a crossbow in this game, I think. Like, you don't have to do the laser shit. Just do a regular ass crossbow and yeah. have him guide it with wind and stuff. I yeah, think. I was thinking that, um, that same thing, having him guide it and maneuver it with wind, almost like um, Yondu in Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy, exactly. where. Yeah, that would be very interesting. I like that direction. How about you, Sai? What do you what do you think on the Fujin staff? You know, crossbow. What, what would you go with that? Uh, definitely crossbow. I think, like, 
a projectile like a projectile weapon would best suit the god of wind and i think like you guys mentioned uh, making him more like yondu like you know using guiding the projectile with wind definitely seems like the best option for him cool yeah i think that would be really interesting all right well moving on with raiden here next let's talk about his full body outfits the skins that you saw i gotta say the the classic attire or what's you know kind of a modernized version of his classic attire the all gray with some blue accents and black accents etc um that to me looked really really good in this game more so than it did in mkx mkx they look like Same. yeah they were like big fitting baggy pajamas which they kind of were in the original game but this one i just feel like they they look more like actual clothing it just looks good to me so what, what other overall go ahead I was, I was just gonna say i think his overall uh it's like how tall he is and how like kind of lanky he is helps with that too it actually looks like he's wearing like some type of like pajamas very like you kind of look fat in them in, uh, <laughs> in mkx i didn't really like how it looked so Thick. Only thing, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I, he has some like arm guards and leg guards, which is kind of weird to me. He should have like the wraps and stuff. I thought so. That's the only thing that stood out to me that I'm not like a, a huge fan of in that design, but I do like it a lot. I like how it looks. So. That was also like the second best to me. Yeah. But uh, what were you gonna say? Oh, I got nothing. Side, did you have anything to add to the skins portion? Oh yeah, definitely. Um. So I never realized that there are actually different skins and the different variations. And one of them was so when we when we played the game and I was looking over some of Raiden's stuff, I'm like, oh, Light Raiden is a different variation. Huh, I'm going to try it out. And like, so when I saw the Light Raiden skins, I'm like, wow, why did I not, why did I not think of this? Because <laughs> yeah. he, like, he has two versions, like the MK1 one that you guys mentioned. And like, oh my God, I think this is actually like, this made me question a lot of my, because uh, I draw the characters a lot, and I sometimes give them, like, different designs, and I'm like, why did I not think of this? This is, this is such a great idea. And, like, the the Light Raiden one is actually a little more closer to his MK2 outfit than some of the other, like, blue fold-over sashes that he had in the earlier games. Right. So I especially love the blue vest that he has in his Light Raiden form. Like, it's like a long, like, almost kind of like a trench coat of some sort, and it's got... Uh, really ornate, beautiful de designs on it, and so, and I especially love that um, in the the pajama update, Raiden uh, has like these little cloud patterns on the white um, on the white clothing. Yeah, yeah, there's it's a lot of detail. Yeah, there's a lot of amazing detail. I kind of wish the um, I kind of wish the outfit was a little more poofier, though, kind of like in the original. Like I know you guys aren't really a big fan of the pajamas looking but i think in in terms of like the way it looks on this model it makes his head look a little too big i can see that actually yeah yeah with some of the models in the game not just raiden either uh, yeah you know kind of looks that way to me as yeah. well yeah. i was might gonna mention earlier sorry uh i was just gonna mention earlier uh i think the medallion might kind of ruin some of his classic outfits if he gets like the mk2 one back like i hope there's yeah. an option to maybe remove the medallion if those do come back because i don't want to have like the mk2 outfit and just like a stupid medallion like, <laughs> yeah I, I, I hope in the like in the final build there's an option to have like like if you don't want a certain gear piece to just have like a no option for that like yeah yeah that's a good nice idea to, yeah like it'd be nice to like play a version a variation where it's like you don't want a certain gear piece on so you just yeah. do like no gear piece for a staff so you're just spinning around nothing <laughs> 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 you're just twirling around his opponent's getting beat up by nothing that would be his great. entire super would just be like invisible like yeah. he only uses a staff yeah that would be Cosmetics. awesome <laughs> um but yeah no i thought raiden his his uh his skins just in general look really really good in this game and i was blown away by his light version as well that was my favorite to use in the in the demo was his the the blue lightning and everything just looked really good in that in that uh outfit so yeah i, will, no, I was digging I, that I will say uh, his primary is probably my favorite Dark Raiden design as well. I think he he looks so damn good in this game. Yes. It's yeah. Because it, the colors and how it looks more similar to Shinnok almost with like the gold and the blue and the red. I think I think it looks amazing. It, it definitely say, it definitely took me a while to get used to the to the Dark Raiden design. I remember when the trailer dropped, I was like, eh. <laughs> I'm not too sure how I feel about the weird like golden like giant chest plate that he has. Mm -hmm. But I think like. 
that might really be my only complaint about it other than that the outfit looks pretty cool like especially like again like it has like such amazing fantasy look to it that i really love and like missed from the series and the colors especially are pretty cool and i really like the um, like the red sash the little um like the uh rope tied belt and yeah i like that too pieces. yeah i agree yeah it's a it's a pretty solid design yeah, Smokeman in the chat says, love how tall he is in this game. I know we mentioned yeah. that, and yeah, I agree with that. Um, and he also said, I love the draping cloak on Light Raiden in 11. $500 sunglasses says, I want his Deception alt. Smokeman wants him uh, to have his MK2 stuff, the kanji arm symbols and everything. I think that would be awesome. Um, yeah, so... Moving on here to his idol animation. There's not really much to mention here. It's it's solid. He doesn't really move around too much. He's kind of got one hand towards his abdomen, like mid-chest, and then one hand out in front of him a little bit. So it's kind of like his classic pose a little bit. He could move his hand up a little bit more and just have the fingers kind of up like he used to do. But other than that, I mean, it's it's pretty solid. And there's no real complaints I have. How about you guys? Uh, uh, Sai, what do you think? Um... I'm not really sure if I'm taking the idle animation stance. I always, I think like it was a mistake for him to like the, to take him away from the like the direction of him like doing the classic MK2 stance that he always had with the with the bottom hand like a closed fist and another one with like two fingers. Right. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, I miss that. It's kind of a shame they're not bringing that back. Uh, down four. What are you thinking on his idle animation? No, I, I can see why. He's kind of robotic, almost. He, he doesn't really move a lot. He kind of just stands there. Right. I like it more than his X one, but I do agree. Like, the MK2 one would have been cool to see. And how he, like... I do like that stance. He had that in MK4 as well, I think. Then they kind of stopped doing it. So. Yeah, it's it's been pretty consistent. Like, he's been doing it or been doing a version of it. Mm-hmm. Um, does he have the, the electricity going up and down his body? I didn't really pay I... too much attention. I didn't yeah, notice. It's, it's really subtle, though. Like, it's like it's not like MK2 or, like, the other games where it just, like, crackles all over his body. It's, like, weird faded, okay, like, Okay, yeah, pulses. I'm watching it right now, and, yeah, I can see it. It's just, it's there, but it's, yeah, like you said, it's very subtle. It's not going all up and down, like, in a movement up and down his body. It's just in little spots. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's move on to some intro animations. We have... The one that was in the Ketchup Muster video is where he spins his staff, uh, coming in, twirling it around with, you know, electricity around it as well, and he slams it down into the ground. Um, any other intro animations stick out to you or ones that I missed? Um, Sai, how about how about you? Did you see any others when you are watching some gameplay? I think my favorite one has to be where the one he's like, he's just like levitating into the fight with like lightning crackling all over the place. That one's I think that's sick, pretty, yeah. Like, yeah, it really just gives him like a grand entrance, like, yeah, this guy's a god. Does he have one where he comes down in a bolt of lightning, kind of like he did in the in Mortal Kombat X a lot, where he just come uh, down in that bolt of lightning? I, that was always my favorite of his. He has one like from the gameplay trailer where he kind of teleports in, like you kind of see the lightning. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. Um, yeah, in a I way. Do, like, I do know. Uh, I remember now. Yeah, like the. He, like, holds his hand to the sky, and then you see him appear. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, that is so sick. I, I hope that's him. I just like the idea of him appearing through lightning. I mean, he did in the MK1 movie, um, so that's kind of how I envision Raiden, is he comes down from the sky with, you know, in a bolt of lightning and then appears like that. So that's kind of always my... The thing I associate most with classic Raiden is that that entrance, I guess. Um, but uh, down four, any intro animations stick out to you or ones that you favorited? Uh, I just like the staff one because it's so swag how he yeah. just spins it and then like <laughs> sticks it down. It's so tight. He's just he's just ready to fuck shit up. Yes. Right. Agreed. <laughs> I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> definitely, yeah, I've implemented his staff a lot more in his gameplay for sure and just his visuals and making it more of a key part of them, obviously, with the gear and everything. So they used it as often as they could, it seems. Um, as far as round animations, so like in between rounds... Did you did you guys catch anything? I, I couldn't... I usually take notes for all of this stuff, but I, I couldn't catch any of that. Did you see any gameplay where in between rounds, kind of like how Sub has his ice teleport, the tombstone drop, does Raiden have one that stuck out to either of you? Um, he I've seen one where he kind of like holds his staff out and then it disappears, but other than that, I haven't seen uh, any of his others, I don't think. Yeah. I need to pay more attention to it. I don't remember too much. Like, I remember his... um. 
uh, is just standard uh, uh, round animation where he's like conjuring up like a lightning ball, like fiddling around with it, then he gets back to his default stance. I don't remember anything too eye catching. Okay. Um, wrapping up on animations here. So we have outro animations. Um, I didn't put anything on this one. Um, in fact, I left the Sub Zero note that I had in there, it looks like. But um, for outro animations, what stuck out to you guys in terms of Raiden's? Outro, because I nothing nothing's jumping to my mind. Do you guys remember any? Um, I kind of like the one where he does the torpedo on the camera. Like he just sort of like levitates, then like teleports in front of the camera, then like goes into the torpedo animation. Oh, okay, yeah. That was the one I kind of didn't like that much. It's okay, but it's just it kinda, doesn't it like zoom in on his face or does he yeah. do like lightning at the camera or something, something like that at the end? Um, I think both of them uh, end up doing lightning and. Okay. the camera just from different angles i did see one where he, he conjures some lightning and then he like puts his hands out and there's like two lightning bolts of him just doing this cool ass pose that one was cool to me <laughs> yeah 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 the one where his head is sort of lowered yeah that one that's yeah. so sick i love that shit yeah. yeah that one's nice um and then we have voice actor wise obviously richard epcar is reprising his role as raiden he did not get recast any thoughts on what you've heard so far i thought he sounded fantastic in the little story prologue thing that we got at the event he sounded really good as as to be expected um so i'm, I'm digging what i heard so far down for what are your thoughts on richard epcar uh, he's yeah. I I think he's channeling something different in this game because it's Dark Raiden. So he's putting more effort in and putting more emotion in, and uh, some of his screams too. Like when he's getting fucked up, like it's really brutal. Like I haven't heard him <laughs> even sound like that before. I'm like, damn, is that really Richard Epcar? Like it was surprising to me. Yeah, I like it. He was actually getting stabbed in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ed Boon's just fucking him up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so Ishi, hey, you're you're the biggest fan of Richard Epcar here. What do you what do you think? He's, he sounds like Epcar Raiden. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really. I do kind of like um the dark filter they're doing on his voice. Is, is, there, cool is there a filter? Yeah, there's like this weird like evil filter they have. Like I noticed when they like when he was talking in the story mode like prologue with Shinnok. Okay. Yeah, and there's definitely more emotion, and I agree. Like there's more like the way he's projecting his voice. It's like more evil. Which is pretty I cool. Hmm. I feel like they designed him around Dark Raiden in this game for sure. Yeah. Like from yeah. animations and his voice and everything. Well, um, I guess any intro dialogues that stuck out to you? Because obviously we had the, like I said, the story prologue scene with Shinnok, which was fantastic and gave us a, a, probably our best sampling of how Raiden sounds in this game. But any intro dialogues stick out to you that you thought were memorable or important? Uh, uh, there was. One was Sub Zero that I really liked, um, where it was like Sub Zero came up to him and he, like, and he was like, "Who do you serve, humanity or the other gods?" And Raiden <laughs> was like, "I serve both." And then like Sub Zero replied, "Oh, I, like something about you can only serve one master or something like that, or no one can serve two masters." I think it was that the was... first. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, that one, that one really stuck out to me. Interesting. Um, didn't he have one with Sub Zero where they're kind of mentioning the DC universe? Oh, yeah, that yeah. little Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of fun, I guess, that they're teasing that with the whole timeline thing. It kind of solidifies that all of these things exist in different universes and timelines and such. Um, down for any intro dialogue stick out to you? Uh, not really. Um, he gets shit on a lot in the intros, like, a lot. Like, everyone is shitting on him, even, like, Sonya shits on him, I think. <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> It just surprised me. I didn't think Sonya of all like she's usually with him, so I was surprised that she's shitting on him now too. Um, not really anything. I'm glad he's getting shit on in the intros, but I hope he does have some better intros. Like I, I didn't really hear anything that good so far. So, all right. Well, let's go through his moves here, both in design, and then we'll kind of roll into gameplay in terms of the visuals as well as their utilities. Um, so he's got so many, so many special moves in this game, like just oh, yeah. from just, we're not going to go through all of them yet. We, I'll figure we might as well go through all of them with the gameplay here. So we'll kind of, like I said, transition to that, but just from an overall visual aesthetics of these specials and his normals and how they use the lightning effects, the teleport effects, everything. 
What are your guys' thoughts on his special moves and how they look? For me personally, I think they've never looked better. They just look really, really good. I thought they, honestly, that was one of the better points of Mortal Kombat X was how good Raiden's special moves looked and his mm -hmm. normals looked and his combos looked. Uh, I was playing Raiden last night against Temp just a little bit, just to... We were doing something where we just ran, like, essentially did random select, and then we had to learn that character in 10 minutes and then face each other um, just for funsies, just to screw around for something different. And one of those characters I got during that time was Raiden, and I was enjoying the hell out of it just because he he has, he is just, all of his stuff looks so, so good. And I think in this game, it is no exception, especially with the brighter colors, vibrancy and everything, his lightning and all of his effects look so damn good. Down four, what are you thinking on his, just the visuals of his moves and everything? Yeah, he's uh he's never looked better. Like they they held out on the red lighting for so long and he didn't have it in nine. He had it in he should have had it in his dark raiden outfit, but he only had it in the teleport, so everyone for this game wanted the red lightning since he was gonna be dark again. And he didn't have it in the X either in his uh dark outfit for some reason, but yeah. god damn it looks so good in this game. Like I don't see how there's any way I'll use the blue lightning, even though it looks really good too. It's just the red lightning is just <laughs> Man, he really looks like a god now with, like, straight lightning bolts and everything. Like, oh, God, it looks so good. Yes. It's really good. How about you, Sai? What are you thinking about the visuals of Raiden's moves, his specials, all of that stuff in this game? Oh, yeah, he's... Okay, so I'll get more to that when we actually get to the ga gameplay and stuff, but I actually have a lot to say about him. But as far as, like, the visuals go, I actually am really, like, amazed at how well he looks. And again, like, we mentioned the red lightning and how... Uh, like that's something we've all been wanting and for Dark Raiden and to finally have it and, and you know and for it to look really good it's such a step up and I love so I love a lot of his animations like the way he, he performs his special moves like especially his torpedo where he like sort of like there's a brief frame where he like levitates himself yeah. and goes into the animation like it looks very fluid and natural and yeah it's the way he sort of like um like positions himself and like poses when he summons lightning like like especially the lightning strike mm -hmm. like he stomps back with his back foot and then like the lightning comes down it really does get sort of like like raiden's like animation this game are like fluid and majestic looking like it's very fitting for him considering he's a god yeah he almost makes it look like effortless like he's not even trying to do this shit yeah 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 his moves look really good to me yeah just fantastic just like you said smooth it all just looks so damn good. Uh, so moving into gameplay, transitioning down four, why don't you take the reins here and take us through his normals, combos, special moves, all of the properties, all that good stuff that you you know everything. You're just yeah. <laughs> smarty pants. No, you're just so damn good. So take us through um, his gameplay aspects. Well, first of all, props to Ketchup and Mustard for releasing that video the other day. Without that, we wouldn't be able to do this shit. Yeah, absolutely. There was he had easily the least footage out of everyone that was shown, so... Um, his normal shit that stuck out to me was, like, that whiff punisher that goes, like, half screen, and it's, like... I think it's, like, back one, two or something that you can hit confirm, and... I think that's gonna be ridiculous. That looks super good to me, like... I can't believe that they gave him that, because... <laughs> if you get into his range, it's like you're fucked, and then... Yeah. Um, let's see. He has the low string, which, uh, it's, like... Back three, one, two, or something. Now yeah. that's really good to me. Um, he does like the stomp thing, and he can combo into it off the torpedo. Um, he's got his back two back from MKX, which no longer combos, but it does crushing blow under some circumstance, right. I think. Um, but you can cancel the first hit, so it's, it's like you can cancel and do a special, but they'll still probably be unsafe. So even though it's an overhead, it's not that super good. Yeah, yeah. A lot of his stuff seem. Well, that, that's what I was kind of picking up as I was watching through their video. And yes, definitely shout outs to them for always putting forth just these awesome gameplay breakdowns, obviously. It'd be a lot harder to do our show if they weren't able to do what they're doing to kind of lay the groundwork for us to be able to pick these things apart and talk about them more in-depthly. And also shout outs to Warner Brothers for, I guess, inviting them back to record yeah. additional footage. So that's very awesome because they're clearly serving a purpose and a a very valuable thing for the community to be able to break down these characters. And as we've talked about, and I know you've mentioned, why don't they just bring them in to do the combat cast and break down yeah, all these honestly. characters? <laughs> because they're just so good at it. So 
yeah, hopefully this is a trend where they get brought in to basically make 10 minute breakdowns of all these characters as they are, they are revealed. So a cool thing. Clearly they have some sort of capability to be brought into some studio near them to be able to do that. So I think that would be really cool. But yeah, as you were mentioning, he's got some of his stuff from MKX back that we're used to. Um, and I, I, they note, they mentioned that a lot of his strings cause knockdown, um, he's got some of his strings returning from MKX and just the overall properties, like you mentioned, the back two. Um, but yeah, and a lot of them were advancing and had decent range. Some of them even incorporate a staff. So I thought that was yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. His mid-range seems really good. Yeah. Um, did you want to get into specials or... Yeah, go for it. Normals or anything? No, I mean, his uh, I, normals look I, good. What were you saying, Sai? Uh, I would like to like add something about his normals. So his back two is actually animated differently than it was in um, X. So that's pretty interesting. Like they're it's using a... some of the same, um, like they're using some of the same moves, but it's like they're animated differently. So they they're using the same like property and the same kind of yeah yeah like visual, he does those overhead but... slap things yeah. But they're not reusing the animation specifically. So yeah, yeah like I was watching. Sense. Yeah, I was watching the video by uh, Ketchup and Mustard, and like they did a slow ver mo version of it. I'm like, I could have sworn this looked a little different in uh, in X. I think he like in X, he kind of slams it down farther, like his hands. Yeah, and this yeah. version kind of slaps their face a bit. That's what <laughs> I noticed at least. <laughs> just, he goes up and slaps them in the face. <laughs> he just takes out his takes out a glove. I challenge you to it too. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That was one of my favorite uh, katana moves in Mortal Kombat X was she just does that backhand slap, the pimp slap, <laughs> just slaps you across the face. That was always a good one. But yeah, uh, take us through the uh, special moves. There are a ton of them for Raiden. It's insane. Yeah, he's got a shitload. Uh, I don't know which special moves will go into which variations. That's what I'm kind of wondering at this There's point. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think that was their longest video yet, too, so it's like. It was, like, literally just five minutes five minutes going through specials. So. Sort of, like, just to, like, get my thoughts out of the way, to sort of paint it with a broad stroke, I think this is, like, the the best Raiden has ever been. And just in terms of, like, realizing his potential as a Thunder God and just, like, seeing the things that he could do with his staff and, like, the little, the little cloud, lightning cloud thing is such a genius idea, and I love how he can teleport into the air and float temporarily and then, like... Mm -hmm. There's a lot of options he has there where he can just sort of pulse his body with electricity and it shocks the opponent. There's Raiden has like so many options in this game. I'm really uh, amazed at how how much they've done with him. It's 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 beautiful. There's a trend. Yeah. There's a trend here with Raiden, with Scarlet, with Baraka that they are this custom variation system. If there's anything successful about it, is that they are clearly being way more creative with using these characters' powers and coming up with more ways to use them than we've ever seen before. They kind of hinted that in X, but this one is seeing it fully realized. Instead of having three specific variations set out for you and saying, here, these are the three you can use. These are what we could come up with. Now it just seems like they are legitimately just trying to think of all the different ways you could use electricity. And some of them are just, yeah, crazy ways that I wouldn't have even thought of. So yeah, down four. What are your thoughts on all of his special moves? You don't have to name everyone however you mm -hmm. want to do it. Yeah, however you feel good about it. Just take us through them and we'll kind of discuss them. Okay, I'll just name like some of the highlights. Sure. Um, he's got like the regular lightning blast, which like he's always had, but it looks more like his MK2 lightning to me. It's like kind of like a slim bolt. It's not like yeah, a, like a know, ball like a or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a stream. Um, what, yeah, it looks it really me... good. Which makes Sorry, me no. curious that if they jump over it, is there still a chance they could connect? Because now that it's a stream instead of a ball, that'd be maybe. Cool. Yeah, he can't amplify it for a second bolt too, so I'm sure that might be something he can do. Yeah. Um, let's see. He has the anti-air, which that looks sick to me. Like he just throws out a huge bolt of lightning, and then like if it hits the bolt, that like if it touches it at all, like he'll suck you in like fucking Darth Vader and just like shock the shit out of your face. I, I thought that move was awesome. <laughs> Uh, it looks kind of weird though, because like, how does the lightning bring them in? Is I, I don't I don't know how it works, but I thought it looked cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, I agree too. <laughs> yeah, he's got the the ground lightning like she brought up earlier. Um, he like stomps the ground, and he can do it at three different angles. So it's like you can do it close, medium, and far, and it doesn't like track, but 
depending on where you're standing, it will hit. It looks pretty ridiculous. Uh, yeah, that looks- one I thought was really, really interesting. He's got that. Anytime you get that close, medium, far stuff, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I like it, dislike it. It's interesting, um, to say the least. But, yeah. I mean, that doesn't even... He gets into some other weird kind of crazy stuff. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It sets him up to be more of a zoner, which I'm kind of concerned about. I don't want him to be just a zoner in this game. Right. Um, but his mid range seems solid, too. So it's like he's going to be hard to get in on. And then you're going to be like, you have to play his range. So it seems pretty ridiculous. Um, let's see. Yeah, he's got the Superman cancel like Ishii also brought up. Uh, you can delay it and, and cancel it. But it... It costs two bars, which is kind of weird to me. I think that's a bit excessive. What do you guys think? Well, to uh, me, I think the torpedo on its own is very powerful. I think it's fair. Yeah, but it's it's still punishable. I'm pretty sure. So it's like I don't know any I'm, when he I'm um startup on the. I'm not. I, I'm not sure. I, it's. Uh, I probably should have looked into the, <laughs> the stuff. Yeah. It was on the. It's, it was on the 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 moves list menu. Um. But it's like you can when he when he does delay it and you can cancel he kind of he does fly back a bit so it's not like you're gonna be getting any pressure off of it or anything yeah. from what I can assume so I don't know I don't know how much how useful that will be yeah um, I sent you a updated list there just things separated a little bit nicer for you to follow okay. so that way it's a little easier to read because those notes yeah, are that will be all kind of jammed uh, jammed together there but yeah. Um, I'm not sure on the canceling taking up two bars. Uh, it really just depends how it's implemented, I guess. What, how good it is? Because yeah, that he's not the only one with something where you gotta essentially expend two bars to change the effects of it or to amplify it. Um, so I guess it all just depends on how useful it is. So yeah, it's it, it could be super be useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah, I have no. It just seems like two bars. Like it just seems like that's a bit much, but. Right. Yeah. Which you can do the same thing with his teleport. His teleport is not a universal move like I thought it was. I thought it was a universal move, but it isn't. That will be in one of the variations, I guess. But uh, yeah, that also costs two bars to do any other direction other than just teleporting yeah. behind them like usual. Yeah, that so. was interesting because you can. It's weird. The teleport, because it's not a base move or it's not one of his base specials. You got to add that in. And to. You can do the normal teleport behind them or you can you can expend meter i think to like that's another one where if you expend both meters you can go even further away like behind so you're safer and you have more distance so they can't punish you as easily um or you can even do a fake out where you teleport in the same spot so you don't actually go behind them so you can kind of mix them up or play mind games with them so that's kind of cool i guess yeah he did have that displacer in mkx but uh it only costs one bar so i'm wondering like why it costs two bars now yeah it does seem good though i think it looks cool um let's see the lightning rod stuff he can like push the staff across the screen and when you amplify it it juggles so he gets a combo off it that seems to be a good combo starter yeah. it also just looks cool he's that like, one pushing the staff at you yeah that one's so weird looking <laughs> but i like it it's just so like i said different it's unique it's creative that he just kind of slides his staff uh, yeah. standing straight up like a pole across the screen it has electricity like a lightning rod that's kind of cool yeah and he like when you amplify he like teleports and then like hits you with it again like it looks really it looks really cool yeah um, <laughs> and he can also throw the lo- rods so what does this do exactly you when you amplify it it creates like the orb the area effect where if you step in that you get hit yeah um, yeah but I don't understand what the regular version does. Um, the, just... no- the normal where he like tosses it at the ground at an angle, yeah. you mean? Because, yeah, mm-hmm. I think that one you can do at close, medium, or far as well. As yeah. In terms of what you can do with it, I'm not... I don't know if it was made... I don't know if it was made clear either. Maybe it's just a... As, like, it's a essentially a projectile at their feet. I don't... Is it a low or a medium? Do you know? Or a mid? Or... I have no idea. I don't even know if it hits them. He just like kind of tosses into the ground. I think I, I'm it... not sure. If... Go ahead. Sorry, go on. No, I thought I just... it was a glitch at first when I saw it. I'm like, what the hell? Why is his staff stuck in the ground? <laughs> I <don't laughs> no, I mean, it... it does. <laughs> I think it's. I think it does. I mean, it hurts him, but I don't know if it's a low or mid. I think it does hurt him. Like it's essentially okay. like a projectile, but at their feet, kind of like Quan's, uh, his whatever the hell those are called in MKX, the little things at the the. I don't even remember where he hits at the ground, like the little burst oh, at the ground. Good. 
what are those even called? Oh, the rune traps. Yeah, rune, rune traps. traps. There you yeah. go. So it's it's like the rune traps almost, except for you have the visual of the the rod going down. But I think it works the same. Those hit mid, so I'm assuming they hit mid um, by default. And then, like you said, if they if you amplify it, it creates an aura. Um, that's my best guess, though. Okay. They didn't really go too far into depth with those because I think just there was just so much to cover with this character that. They didn't really go too crazy in depth with any of them. They just kind of gave an overview of all the tools he has, so to speak. Yeah, I there's no way they could get through all this and going in depth. On <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just, I mean, um, they had time to record stuff, but I don't think they had time to really, they could only scratch the surface, so to speak. They didn't yeah. really know how to combo everything together quite yet. Yeah, they were mentioning that with the teleport too. Like, they, people were wondering if he can combo off his teleport, and they just had no idea because they just didn't have enough time to lab, basically. Right. Um, so his other one was the flight variation, which he can kind of like. He doesn't exactly fly like a normal fly, like Ermac per se, but he can teleport into the air, and he has multiple options off that. He can do like a projectile, a straight projectile if they try to jump, a uh, angled projectile if they're just on the ground. Or you can do kind of like a front flip out of it. Yeah. And then I guess if you spin the bar, he like just shocks you, like just emits lightning out of himself. And if you come to that, you get just fucked up. Right. That was the one that if you amplify it, you had to press the stance switch and it created like a lightning blast. So it's kind of interesting that they're using the stance switch for an amplify button. That is weird. That is something like I was thinking that they could do. Because, yeah, I know you had mentioned that, like you just said, that one way they could make it universal if they end up going that way, if they want to dial it back and make it easier or simpler to do is to use the stance switch instead of the block button, because now a lot of the stuff um, that you're amplifying, you have to do after the hit or towards the end of the hit or whatever. So pressing yeah. block might mess with that um, or give you accidental enhance or accidental amplified moves when you don't really mm -hmm. want to. So yeah. So clearly they're using the stance switch, to do some of them so I, I it shows that it is an option but yeah as you were saying that it creates this nice little lightning burst effect that's pretty cool yeah it is cool i just i don't know how useful this will be this variation um i did think he could like move around and stuff but it seems like that's not the case he just is kind of stuck there and you have the options out of it uh yeah that's kind of a staple with a lot of characters over the years because sindel's had a hover ermax mm -hmm. had a hover so yeah, they he's he's got a hover. <laughs> yeah, he's got a hover. <laughs> uh, let's see. And it was did about the... time. You know, it was about time because like Raiden can canonically fly, and yeah. like I don't think in the past he has ever had a, any like moves that had him sort of levitating. I don't think so either. I think this is the first time. Yeah. You're right. So um, it's definitely a welcome addition. Agreed. Uh, and he has like the rolling thunder where, like, he creates like a like a cloud basically, and then if you stand in that, you take damage. That That's one was cool. yeah. That one was so different. I didn't expect him to have one of those, you know, essentially like the uh, caltrops or, <laughs> you know, ivy's thorns or anything like mm -hmm. that. Like the damage over time moves if you stand in this for too long. But not only it's not like a it's not a static spot on the thing. It actually travels across the stage. I thought that was really cool, and I like the name Rolling Thunder. So I thought that was a creative yeah, Wow, one. that makes sense now, yeah. <laughs> I realized, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. legitimately rolling across the screen. I like that. I thought <laughs> it was pretty tight. So that's, to me, that's a, a cool move. One of those that I was mentioning when they're being quite creative that I didn't expect something like that. So. This is funny that this god just creates like a small little like, <laughs> yeah, cloud. Of dinky little cloud, yeah. <laughs> Go forth, my thunder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just... <laughs> This big, powerful god's like all he can muster is this tiny little cloud. I do like that, and it's attacking their feet. <laughs> like instead of like <laughs> anything else, it's just going at their feet, like nibbling at them. <laughs> yeah, it's just funny. behold my power, <laughs> static electricity. Oh wow, that kind of shocked me there. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're not getting hurt by it; they're just kind of standing in it. He's gonna have Tickle. a special move where he rubs socks, <laughs> and then he just like <laughs> builds up static. <laughs> Ah, now your hair is standing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Just gets a balloon. Yeah, all right. But <laughs> anyways, <laughs> that's the Rolling Thunder. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the whole variation, I think, is so far. I haven't seen anything else. Um, 
The other one that stood out to me was the uh, the launcher where he like does a spin, and then it's like a it's like an orb kind of uh, yeah. goes around him, and when you amplify that, he uh, gets a combo. And I love how like the optimal combo seems to be in this game is jump kick, uh, electric fly, which is kind of what he had in the older games. Like you would always do a jump kick and then into the Superman, right? That's like the main combo, and he hasn't had that for a while, so it's cool that. His actual combos are good now with that move, which with with a uh, jump kick, yeah, uh, Superman. Let's hope his damage is there, because that is one thing he must have got hit with the nerf stick at some point in MKX. Because yeah. Thunder God, the variation I was trying, man, you could do some really cool combos. But I noticed you're working hard for the weekend for just like twenty five percent damage, and I was like, holy cow! Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised when uh, Ketchup and Mustard like do like a launcher into like a string into a ender and it does like 20 percent. i'm like damn like that's uh that's pretty low i guess maybe it's like the crushing blows that will make up for that right like, you have to really incorporate that and i did see like this does seem to give him the best damage so far they said uh so i wouldn't be surprised if this is one of his better moves because if you're able to hit confirm into this into good ass damage um yeah i could see that being the case uh it's like you have this giant powerful god he's doing like all these amazing feats and it's only like 20 percent. and then cabal shows up and he's like does three hits and it's like yeah 40 percent. what's up <laughs> that's, always been, yeah. <laughs> that's always been a problem for me because like goro had like average damage in mkx but like jackie does like fucking 55 percent for like yeah. her regular shit i'm like why like yeah. why is this girl doing so much more <laughs> yeah it doesn't make much sense like the <laughs> Someone's being electrocuted to death, and it's just like a, it's just a minor inconvenience. But 14%. somebody's just doing a couple punches, and it's just got them knocking on death's door. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, uh, one of those moves, I'm trying to remember what it was called. The, uh, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember the name, but it was that little electric current that he does. He creates it with his staff, and it's like the one that bounces on yeah, the bottom pokes- of the screen. Yeah, he pokes the ground with his staff, and like this little lightning worm just like jumps across and <laughs> yeah, talks it does to people. Like <laughs> it makes me think of if you're familiar with Super Smash Bros. at all, it's like Pikachu's normal bead sends like a little lightning that dances across, like a slinky almost, across the screen on the ground. That's yeah. what that reminds me of because it looks a lot like that. That's funny. Cute yeah. little lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's cute, Raiden. Oh, you're you're <laughs> killing me. It's so cute though. It's like being mauled by a tiger or a, a lion. It's just like, oh, you're so cute. As he's eating your legs off. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's about it. Uh, well, the yeah. other one was the Superman punch, where it replaces the Superman, the electric fly. Um, oh, yeah, he did it on the trailer. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, what Superman. I was surprised about. I was Because I wondered if he would have that move in from the trailer, and he kind of does. Uh, yeah, I like that one a lot. Yeah, and the Amplified, he, like, picks him up by your face and then just, like, fucking pushes you away. It's really cool. Um, Yeah. That's all I got for special moves, though. That stood out to me, at least. Yeah, I think you got them all there. Um, And then, yeah, I remember just, yeah, a lot of, like, some of them were just really left-field thinking, um, especially the Rolling Thunder and the little lightning bolt that dances across the screen. So, interesting stuff. He looks like a lot of fun, and... Like I said, the damage hopefully is there. As Armand pointed out, that Thunder God was nerfed. He was top three at one point. So I, I figured there was something up there for why he was doing so little for how much he was putting in work-wise. Um, but yeah, just visually appealing. Gameplay, it seems like he has a lot of options. I do kind of see what you were saying down for with him potentially being more zony. A lot of his specials seem to be very zone heavy, like different options to zone your opponent. So, yeah, maybe I could see that. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with him though. Like I know Temp loves the Thunder God because of the effects and stuff, and I get that. But I just I like the direction they went with him because I never I always like Raiden, but I never have that much fun playing him. So I'm hoping this is the game where it's like I really want to play Raiden. I hope he's fun to play and he's not just boring zoner black adam style like just i hope he's not that type of character he doesn't look that way i think if like the zoning variation doesn't work out i can try the staff variation or the flight one right and they said this is still like an early build like not all the moves are here so maybe the flight will get more shit than it had in the demo or whatever so yeah early impressions are good though this character is sick as fuck yeah uh, agreed he was yeah 
in the demo, he was easily top three for me in terms of having fun to play him. I think I played him and Baraka most just because I was having so much fun playing those characters. So I look forward to seeing more of him um, when the actual game comes out. So agreed on those fronts. Um, what are you thinking, Sai, on his gameplay-wise? Um, overall, I think... So, like, I I used to be a Raiden main, and I'm so used to, like, the way he played, you know, like, traditionally, with, like, the mind games and everything. Granted, he still has it in this game, but it's just they really upped it and, like, evolved his playstyle to the point where it's almost kind of like a different... It's different, and I wouldn't say that's a bad thing, because I know there are a lot of people who complain about Raiden's gameplay and him not, oh, not being realized to his potential. And granted, there are a lot of, like, moves that I think they retained. It's just visually they've been updated. And I think the inputs changed, too. Because when I was playing him, um, the only move I could, like, uh, that remained consistent with the inputs was his torpedo. It's, you know, um, back, forward, uh, three, I believe. Yeah, and, that sounds uh, right. Yeah. yeah, but, like, everything else, like, at least the variation-specific ones, the inputs were changed a lot. Interesting. What would you give him? What 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 do you want for Raiden that he I doesn't think, have? I think really they gave him everything that I probably would have like, like they they even gave him things that I never would have thought of. But yeah, as as far as like him being his potential being realized, I think they gave him pretty much anything I'd probably ever want for him. Like this is, I think, I don't really know where they could go from here. I mean, I think his gameplay has just peaked. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. Think... I agree as well. They kept his classic stuff, the torpedo, the teleport, and the fireball, and then they just, like, gave him all the staff shit, which is... I don't think anyone really expected the staff to be such a, like, big deal in this game for him. Yeah. I wish the teleport inputs were, like, down up again, but that's... What is I'm the probably, teleport input? I have no idea. Yeah, that's I'm not the thing. sure either. Like, I mentioned this before, like, they changed the inputs so much where it's, like, I feel like I'm not even playing, like... I'm playing a totally different version of Raiden now. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could see it, that. Could it have not just been in that variation that you're using, or is it just... Probably, it... because I remember I used the... I didn't use the staff variation much. And I noticed okay. he teleports more in the staff one. Mm. Interesting. But yeah, I didn't play him enough to to sort of, like, figure him out. But, I mean... I mean I'm pr he's probably not going to be in my main, my main in um, 11. I mean, so far I'm really getting, uh, like, really attached to Scorpion. I just love the way he plays his... So I, I think didn't know that. Huh, that's cool. Yeah, I played Scorpion the most. I think uh, when we were when we were at the reveal event. Nice. Yeah, I'm really loving his gameplay. I didn't really get to touch Raiden that much. Uh, giggity. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Down four. So, I, I didn't put anything for throw. What did you notice? What his throw was? Oh yeah, his throws are sick. Uh, he's got the one where he like. He kind of stands behind you almost, and then like shocks you with both of his hands. Oh, nice! He makes you like do a little walk, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then the other one, yeah, he walks you down, which is like the sickest. Oh, yeah, that's ever. right. Yeah, that's right. He's just constantly blasting you as he walks towards you. That's. Like yeah, while that. he's walking as well, it's yeah. so cool. I do like that one. Yeah, I do remember that one. Um, and then for crushing blows, did you notice any crushing blows that he has? Yeah, so he's got the air, when you do the, like, the air um, torpedo, when you, like, amplify it, he kind of, like, does, like, a power bomb almost, where he, like, drops your ass, like, onto the ground, and then, like, it zooms in on their chest and shit. It doesn't do an x-ray effect, which is kind of weird. Maybe that's something they'll add in later, but uh, right. I still like it, though. I still think it looks super cool how he just drops them onto the ground. Um, the throw one where he, like, electrocutes you and then kicks you, or uh, maybe <laughs> tech wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, pulling off that one a lot. Oh really? That's sick. Yeah. Just that, like for, yeah. for some reason, I triggered that one the most. I don't know what was <laughs> up. With yeah, like I would keep doing that move, and like I would see like him like kicking to them, them in the ribs, and you could see him crush. But yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I that's hope a nice to, one. I hope to see in his crushing blows, like seeing like the organs being electrified and stuff like that, or you know, if he goes to like punch them, maybe just have because you know how some of the crushing blows are universal like the down to the uppercut one that that's a universal crushing blow for everybody but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you can't have some unique quality specific so as he's doing the like uppercut you see some electricity go through their like face i don't know stuff like that would that be would be cool. really cool so just little things to make it unique still to give it that little bit of unique flavor um Oof, yeah yeah exactly little personality 
Um, in terms of Fatal Blow, now this is the one that we saw start off in the trailer. So do you want to go through and explain how his Fatal Blow works? Uh, he basically just, yeah, he does like the staff spin where he hits you several times and then across the face. Uh, what the hell does he do after that? Does he teleport into the air and then throw it? Yeah, so basically he does a little spinny thing in the, like he did in the trailer, breaks their face, and then he teleports into the air, throws the staff at the opponent's face, like bashes them in at the end, yeah. and then it, it essentially bounces them up off of the ground into the air. Then he teleports back down onto the ground, catches them with his staff like a like a lightning rod almost, and pales it through them as he bursts with electricity. So it's kind of a cool little chain of events i suppose yeah i love it i love how he just teleports into there and just chucks it like a javelin almost <laughs> yeah. like he just throws that shit <laughs> yes. straight at their face scarlet's got that going for her too where she just flat yeah. out javelins a blood spear through their face yeah i like that very yeah, the stylish tele <laughs> the teleport to catch the staff is really cool too absolutely and it's almost a callback to his mk4 fatality where he like picks you up onto the staff i don't think it's like exactly but you can make a... It's very a just, subtle. Yeah, yeah, it's subtle. But I would be surprised if that doesn't like end in a brutality in some fashion where he, he does electrocute you fully to death off of that a lightning rod effect. I think that would be cool. That would be sick. Um, so then fatalities, did we get to see a second? I did see one where he electrifies them into the air. All their limbs like get electrocuted off, but they're still statically... Uh, attached, yeah, yeah, attached to the body. Then he like crushes them into a ball, and then follows up by blasting them with electricity. And then all the limbs just shoot off once again. So weird, odd. I don't know. What do you guys feel, Sai? What are you thinking about this I fatality? Like it. I mean, the whole like idea. Like, so I've always like wanted to see Raiden like with magnetism and electricity, and like this is the closest I've ever gotten to it. So I like it. Just, like, seeing the lightning sort of, like, magnetically, like, I wouldn't say magnetically, just sort of, like, statically keeping them attached. Sure. And then, like, you know, crush them into a ball and blast them all off with another lightning shot. I think it's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, it's interesting. Down four, what are you thinking? Uh, it's okay. Um, Yeah, like he was saying, it's, it's kind of cool to see their, like, limbs separated. And then he kind of, yeah, he just puts them into a ball and then, like, a Dukin's, like, a fireball at them <laughs> yeah. and i don't know it looks weird to me i don't, I don't know how i feel about it That's, it's okay but it's not it's yeah weird. i'm in the same boat as you um i i i don't know it just i don't hate it it's just it doesn't it's just there it's i think anytime you use electricity to blow off like to separate limbs i'm just like i don't know it's just odd to me to use it's ah I don't know. It reminds me of like other fatalities where I don't understand why, or maybe even like Cyrax's, right? So like how the net goes through them and all in the cubes, but instead it's just their limbs cut off for some reason. That's kind of how I'm thinking about this one where he electrocutes them, but it's their limbs that fly off at first, but then they stay, then they come crunching back, which reminds me of like a Kenshi or Ermac thing, like telek telekinesis by crushing them into a ball. And then an additional blast then separates them. None of it blows up. It just separates them once again. I don't know. It is kind yeah, of like, odd to me. They were like in the same position as they were when they were getting separated. Yeah. So if, like why? If I make a, if I may make a suggestion for his second fatality, since we don't know it yet, um, I would like to see something um, like with him like vaporizing the opponent to ashes or something like that. That would, that would be awesome. That would be pretty unique. Smokeman says. He loves the gibberish Raiden says in his fatality when he separates the limbs. It it sounds like some 3D era stuff, and it's wonderful. So That's cool. I did not hear that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Raiden's always good for some gibberish. <laughs> Speaking of gibberish, does he do it when he does a torpedo in this game? I think I, I heard think it. So, yeah, I think so. I can't remember, I can't remember for that. sure, but I think so. I would hope so. Smoke I'd be very surprised if he wasn't. He doesn't, so... Huh. Does oh, that would be weird? Really shame. shame. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny because he does it in one game, then he doesn't do it in the next one, then he does it again. It's did he do like, it in MK9 and X? MK, he did MK9, it in X. Yeah, he did it in X. Yeah. Huh. Strange. Yeah, I don't know what they're reasoning for that. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's because he's dark and they 
Do you want him to be more serious or something like come off more intimidating and not be all gibberishy? I I don't know, but I yeah. like I like my yeah. MK4 gibberish. <laughs> like, yeah, me too. I, I would be still intimidated if a thunder god like screamed like gibberish while charging at me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. If it's it adds more fear to it. Um, let's move on to brutalities here. So he. Um, the, there's two that I noticed that were in the ketchup and mustard video. He lightning, he lightning blasts his opponent's head off. So uh, like a callback to his Mortal Kombat one fatality. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he, the other one that I had down here is a lightning strike. He calls down a lightning strike from the sky, like his special move, obviously. And then it like goes through the center of his opponent. So it goes through their face, through their chest, through their legs, and leaves a skeleton with some like burnt flesh remaining but their arms are still there. Like, their arms are unaffected. So it's like a skeleton with arms knelt down <laughs> on its knees. I thought that was really cool. So, like, a strip of lightning just went through their body, through their torso, all the way down from their head to their toes, but didn't go through their arms. I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, I like that one. I think I'd visually I'd like that brutality more if there were, like, burn or singe marks, like, towards the edges were, like... The meat is like burned off, right? Like down the middle. Of the I can see that. <laughs> I did like it though. It yeah. is very sick how he just electrocutes the fuck out of them and then like just pinpoints where to use it. Like, yeah. And I like how the skeleton kind of slumps over to it. I do wish it was a bit more charred, like the skeleton, but uh, yeah, it's tight. Agreed. Um, and he has the um, the throw one too, where he just explodes you. Like, you just on both hands, like he's electrocuting you, and you just explode. I'd like to point out, too, like, he says, like, the nicest thing after like, he just brutally kills someone. He's like, find peace and death. Yeah. Like, Dude, you just fucking, in, like, destroyed this guy. And you're just like, find peace and death, bro. That's like, just, he's like, it's, he thinks killing yeah. them is giving them peace. I think that's kind of, that's tight. Like, he should just walk over and put a flower on their body or something. <laughs> I think it just, it really, sh like, gives him a lot of character because he's so nonchalant about death because this guy's an immortal. He can't really, he's a god. He right. can't. Yeah, it's nothing. That makes sense. I like that. It's cool. Um, so last bits here are story-wise. Any story hopes or possibilities that you see? Just what are you hoping, I guess, ultimately we see for Raiden in this story? Because a lot of it's going to revolve around him. Um, down for what, what story stuff do you have in mind for Raiden? Any hopes or desires that you specifically can think of? Uh, I don't have very many. Um, I just hope he fucks shit up as Dark Raiden and he's an actual <laughs> threat because he should be, I feel. Like, he shouldn't just be a pushover. I hope he isn't just, like, the... Basically, like, the Grodd, the Brainiac. Like, if Kravika sure. is Brainiac and he's Grodd, like, I don't want that. I want him to be a serious thing in the story. Um, I just hope he doesn't fuck up as bad as MK9 Raiden, basically. <laughs> That's about all I want. How about you, Sai? Well, um... I don't really like this this version of Raiden, so the fact that we're getting to see original timeline Raiden before the changes, I think that's going to be really exciting for me to see. I mean, I'm a big fan of, like, I prefer Light Raiden a lot more as well, just because I just like, again, the mentor role. I like the kind of, I like the guy who's, like, the teacher, the the guy who cares and loves the mortals and, you know, and wants, to, wants the best for them. And so I think just, to me, the most interesting thing about Raiden in this game is just the possibility of seeing Light Raiden and Dark Raiden interact, potentially. Right. Because he's yeah, he's obviously in the game. He's a variation. So just seeing them sort of interact and sort of argue and potentially even fight, I think that's going to be really interesting for me to see. I think the only thing that I hope for is something that doesn't happen. And I do not want to see... You had mentioned wanting to see them fight Light Raiden and Dark Raiden. I don't want Light Raiden to be the one to stop Dark Raiden. Yeah, you don't want him to steal Fujin's, like, uh, Not story. only just Fujin, yeah, especially that, but we already had that with Injustice 1. I really don't want to see the good version of a character take on the bad version and be the one to stop them like we saw with Superman. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like with you there. recycling what they've already done. So I feel like that would be uncreative and redundant. Even if it's two different series, it's just kind of... We've been there, done that, seen that happen. I would. I think there's other characters you could bring in to stop Raiden. So I would yeah. much prefer... Yeah, like a Fujin yeah. or whoever. I mean, even like Scorpion or somebody ri rising to the occasion somehow or whatever. 
Yeah, but definitely by no means I I don't want him to stop be the one sure. to stop him. Like again, like Raiden is the mentor archetype. He shouldn't be able to steal like the light, the, you know, the the spots of the you know characters who rightfully deserve to be the main characters. And like, I I hope Liu Kang and Kung Lao are the main characters in this game. And like Raiden is sort of like the mentor role again. Right. But I mean, I'm just I'm just mentioning like I want to see the confrontation between a light Raiden and dark Raiden. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up Raiden and we'll give our final grades on what we think of Raiden thus far obviously based on what we've seen we don't know what he's going to be in the final game but just based on the footage we've seen thus far and some of us um are just the some of the info that we've gotten and footage and all that good stuff um I'll go first in terms of how I rate Raiden and everything I witnessed and experienced I really like this Raiden from a design standpoint and a gameplay standpoint. I think he's really interesting um, and a lot of fun. Like I said, he was between him and Brock were the ones I played the most at the event. So I'm going to give Raiden a A, an A, an A, 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 like Raiden just feels like a totally different character to me, and I, and again, I, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, it's I feel like with my attention span right now geared towards Scorpion, I don't really think I'll be finding myself playing Raiden that much. But I think warranting him a B plus and A minus high rating, and it's sure. fair because they've they've evolved the character so much, and it's really cool for me to see how much how far he's grown. I feel like so you yeah, have to I... be pretty skewed to not see B plus or an A minus as a big yeah. a good score. What are you thinking down for? Uh yeah, I'll give him like a an A plus I think. A I think plus, he's awesome. wow! Yeah. I think that's the highest you've given thus far, maybe. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, he's just I'm really excited for him. Like I never expected to be hyped for Raiden again after Injustice Two, especially. I'm just like, <laughs> we really need Raiden again, and he didn't do much for me in that game. So I was just so happy to see like, damn, they really went all out with him in, in this game. Like I didn't expect them to at all, because I like I said I always like Raiden. Like I dressed up as Raiden when I was like three years old for halloween like sure. with that shitty nice. mk1 outfit <laughs> like I, I love raiden he's an awesome character but i just never want to play him but this game definitely like grabbed my attention fully so yeah super awesome love how they just incorporated him yeah all right cool so you got an a plus an a and a b plus somewhere between a b plus and a minus so it sounds like he's high rated across the board from all of us and i think that is the general consensus for this character in the community as well. A lot of people are digging how Raiden looks and plays in this game, so I think a lot of people are excited to get their hands on him and discover everything he can do, as well as story potential, see what role he's going to play and how everything turns out for him in the end. Um, on that note, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank you, Sai, for joining us. And you have a YouTube channel, sir, so why don't you go ahead and plug that? Where can they find your YouTube content? Sure thing, yeah. Um, well, I don't really have a URL yet, but if you just look up Cyros YT or Cyros on YouTube, chances are you'll find my videos. I have a noob Cybot icon. <laughs> there you go. So Cyros, all one word, S-A-I-R-O-S-E-T on YouTube. What were you saying down for? I was just going to mention, uh, is she, weren't, you, uh, weren't you looking to uh, commission people to do art too? Maybe. Oh yeah, that's right. I am currently unemployed now, so... <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> and I... And I need to pay my bills. So if you guys are <laughs> interested in being my patrons, I have a PayPal and an email. I'll plug those in as well. But yeah, other than that, thanks for having me on. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Fun. Thanks for joining us for our Raiden Random Select. And like I said, <clears throat> next time you should be hearing us will be for Cabal after the combat cast. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Once again, check out the Discord if you'd like to come join our community, join the discussions, listen to us live. You can do all those things by coming and checking out the Discord completely free. And if you're not familiar with Discord, it's a lot like Skype. It's a text chat as well as voice chat system. Um, so come join that. It's in our description. And uh, join us for this journey to Mortal Kombat 11. We're all super excited and looking forward to discussing it more and learning more about these characters. So on that note... Take care, everybody. We will see you next time. Peace.